Platinum and silver, because that is the big mover in the commodities markets uh, today, up by about 3% on the ETF, the SLB, although still down about 25% from the 31-year intraday high hit just last month. Our next guest says silver could actually hit 50 bucks before year-end. We're joined now on the Fast Line by Dave Hightower, founder of commodity research firm, The Hightower Report. David, it's great to have you with us. What will power silver to 50 bucks a share? Will it be industrial use? Will it be speculation? Well, I think that's part of the equation because you also have flight to quality uh, mixed into that that seems to be uh, a more pronounced uh, influence than it was at the beginning of the year. I mean, not only do we have U.S. debt problems, but the EU uh, problems being re uh, resurrected again. But, uh, the, you know, the, the fundamentals behind this market uh, have really never went away despite the heartbreak we saw in the month of May. The fundamentals never went away, but at the same time, what gets you to the valuation of, say, $50? Because back when it was approaching $50, Dave, uh, you know, a lot of people were saying that the incremental demand came from speculators, came from the demand in the SLB. Do you think that we're going to have the same amount of speculation in the market as we had previously? And if not, what's going to replace that? Oh, I think we will have. I, I think that uh, the alternatives uh, have continued to shrink. I think that uh, the coin buyers and the physical buyers, and again, uh, this sort of gets lost in the shuffle, but China and India with uh, different currency valuations probably don't see the price as high as what domestic investors do. Brian Kelly, I've got to give you some props because yesterday on Fast Money you said, we got to watch silver, got to watch silver. Here we are today. It's up by about 3%. So you have a question for Dave? I do. Hey, Dave, you know, we're talking about the speculation side of it, um, there, you know, Sprott has a couple of physical ETFs out there. They're now coming out with a physical mutual fund. Will that, I mean, is it just all about domestic, uh, investment demand? To me, that brings the investment demand somewhere north of 60, 70 percent in this silver, which is great on the way up, but it can unravel quickly. Well, that's, that's, that can't be denied. Uh, I think it took something like uh, six weeks from the implementation of the first silver ETF to where the equivalent of the exchange warehouse stocks of silver were in fact taken up. And uh, so, yeah, it is a huge speculative component, but really there's a reason why they want it, and they weren't really shook out by this uh, May washout. So I'm, I'm very surprised that the weak-handed players are coming back from war so quickly uh, in the silver market. All right, guys, i got to leave it there. Dave, thanks so much for phoning in. I do appreciate your analysis uh, today. I want to go uh, to Steve Cortez for this trade here. I don't know if you were in the silver trade at all, but seeing how volatile uh, it has been in the past few weeks and seeing where copper is and given Goldman Sachs' comments yesterday, if you had to make the choice, which would it be? Uh, if I had to make a choice, I would be in copper because I think that there's more industrial use for it than silver, but I don't like either metal. And in fact, if silver rallies nearer to $40, I'm going to short it up there. Look, I think this is a play on inflation. I do not believe in sustained inflationary pressure. We got a report today out of Washington on housing that we saw prices on homes go down 5.5% year over year. That's a two-year low. That is just not the recipe for lasting inflation. So I'm a silver bear. And BK, just quickly, same question to you. Silver or copper? Uh, probably silver, probably just because of the speculative demand in there and it's such a smaller market. Although I bought, bought both FCX today and silver wheat. All right, got to take a break here, but we will be back in just a few moments with some of our traders' memories of Mark Haynes.